This is one of these things I just randomly added to another order, and it was an order I was placing with Banggood. And this is a, a voice control LED light glows wristbands bracelet bangle party concert. So everything covered there. And it's basically the voice control bit. I wanted to see what they used for the audio um, circuitry because if you turn it on with a button, then when you, you make uh, noises, when you speak, it sort of flashes. And if there's any music in the vicinity, it pulses and flashes too. And it's obviously designed for much smaller wrists than mine because, you know, I've uh, got big hands, big wrists, but everything's big. And uh, I cannot quite get that round to lock. Actually, could I get that to lock there? Is it going to cause? Is it going to cause restriction of blood flow if I do? Uh, I'm not going to risk this because no, that that's really unpleasantly tight. Uh, so yes, it's not something I'm going to be wearing to a disco anytime soon. But that's probably a good thing. So it's got a. When you look through the uh, top, you can see it's got two little transistors and some resistors and capacitors and this little blob chip. And initially I was thinking, oh, that's nice because the, the little, uh, the discrete components might mean it is just based on discrete circuitry. And I thought, oh, maybe the COB chip, which COB stands for chip and board. And it's basically it's an integrated circuit bonded onto the circuit board in here and then covered in resin, uh, a little pool of white resin in this case. And I thought maybe there's more to it than that. But um Let's uh, take a look inside it. So it's got a couple of things. Let's, uh, well, let's open it for a start. Strangely, this uh, the whole band does carry the light round a fibre optic end. It's got these uh, grooves in it that actually catch the light. So it actually lights as a sort of series of, sort of stripes around your wrist. It's not too bad. I guess that's why it's so chunky and it's so heavily interlocking at the end here. So the two LEDs that point out either side can actually fire the light round it. But uh, let's uh, open it up. Oh, that's not going to fit. So there's four screws. I can see a little microphone in the back here. The microphone, it doesn't have a little port for the audio. It must just rely on the audio actually going through the plastic casing. Oops. And it's also got the little on-off button, uh, the little grey button here. So inside... The... Circuit. I, I'm just going to reverse engineer this right now and uh, I'll be back in a moment. Well, that turns out to be a very simple, nice, pleasing circuit because uh, the chip on board, the cob here, is just purely the grey on-off button. That's just purely toggling the circuit on and off. The, all the uh, sound detection, the microphone and the processing is just basically amplification through a couple, a couple of transistors to drive the LEDs. And the only thing that really skewed me here when I was like reverse engineering it was uh, the one mega ohm resistor was actually marked O1E. And initially I kind of read that upside down. I read it as 310, which would mean 31 and no zero, so 31 ohms. I thought, that's quite a strange value for that uh, position. But um, then I measured it and it was like coming up to the next, you know, the next best thing to one mega ohm. And I went online and it's an industry standard code. Uh, instead of putting numbers on, they just put, uh, well, they do put numbers on, but they put letters on as well. O1E is a standard code in the industry for one mega ohm. So here's the circuitry. Um, it's uh, got an electric microphone. Now, electric microphones act as a sort of almost like a sound activated resistor. I know some audio experts will be like, what? Uh, OK, the electric microphone is a microphone that uh, has a transistor in it, a high sensitivity sort of MOSFET type transistor. And it's coupled. Uh, it detects sound by a capacitive plate. Um, capacitive diaphragm modulating with the sound and that basically gives local drive to that transistor and it, it effectively modulates its resistance slightly. So if you create a potential divider with this resistor here and this sound activated resistor with the microphone itself, then you'll get a sort of waveform out. It'll, uh, at that point the voltage will fluctuate with the signal. So that's coupled onto the base of this very ordinary transistor which was called 1AM. The 1AM is this, a fairly common uh, NPN transistor, I believe. Uh, so it's got a 100 nanofarad capacitor, which measured nicely at nearly 100 nanofarad bang on, which is nice. 
It's got the one meg ohm resistor that gently biases that. It, it uh, just keeps the, it references the base of the transistor to the positive rail very gently with a slight trickle of current, which means that any disturbance that's coupled through the capacitor will make a much stronger swing. And the, it is biased slightly on, and the reason for that is because this transistor, which is doing all the work of switching the LEDs, um, is biased on with this 18K resistor, resistors, which is passing enough current to be amplified by that transistor to pass the current through the LEDs to light them up with a limiting resistor in series. And this transistor is normally just biased very slightly on by this one mega ohm resistor, so it, it actually pulls that to ground. Um, or the negative rail or zero volts and that keeps that transistor turned off until it detects audio and then the modulation means that transistor then fluctuates on and off and that's then buffered up and amplified to the LEDs. The little chip is just, as I say, the cob is just down here. All it's doing is switching the zero volt rail or the negative to the, um, the actual batteries themselves, a couple of lithium cells. So you know what, this is such a simple circuit. It would be interesting roughing this up on a bit of breadboard and seeing if we can make it. I'm going to get the components together. One moment, please. OK, I think that's everything we need. Uh, some random wire links, a battery connector, a 6-volt power... Well, actually, this is a nickel metal hydride, so it's closer to 4.8 volts. Um, a little electric microphone. This is one of ten I got in a blood box from China, just a generic uh, eBay supplier. Two terminal electric microphone. I'm using two um, BC547 transistors because, well, that's pr probably the most common transistor that I use here. A 2N3904 might work. Any generic NPN high gain transistor you can find will probably work fine. There's a 100 nano capacitor and of course the resistors. Uh, oh, I've also got a, a, just a standard, I think this is a 3 watt LED, just as a bright light source. But I've also, in anticipation that this might work really well, I've dug out a, a set of parallel uh, LED Christmas light type string lights. Uh, they're designed to work the solar panels so they're all in parallel and I've just got various adapters so I've got the one that lets me plug this into the breadboard. So let's start. So let's start with the microphone. The microphone has a negative side and a positive side. The negative side is usually bridged onto the case with little tracks so that's the sort of screened side because the case is then screened. So I'm going to plug that in about here. I may change the position later depending on whether it's going to get in the way of other things. That looks all right. Let's get the power rail as well. This is a, in this breadboard, uh, all these little strips of five are connected together individually in this, sort of, in this orientation, but isolated from each other in that orientation. And these should hopefully be a continuous uh, conductor. Some of the um, some of the generic eBay ones have breaks in these uh, bus bars, but you know, whereas that's not uncommon, they're normally marked, and uh, some of them they just don't mark them, and it just catches you out when that happens. So let's plug this into one of the bus bar rails that goes along the bottom here. So this is the negative, and this is the positive. Righty ho. Next, I'm going to put in the 5.6k resistor, so that's uh, green, blue, red green, blue, and two zeros, which is a 5.6k. So that's going to the positive connection of this microphone. I have to be careful not to short this out here. Um, and that's going to the positive rail. That looks all right. Um, I need a link from the negative of the microphone to the negative rail. Next, I need the first transistor stage. You'll have to check what's your base collection emitter. Uh, I should actually write that in the drawing, shouldn't I? Base, base, collector, collector and emitter. And these are all NPN transistors. So let's uh, put this transistor about Keep it well spaced. Put it about there and I'll just splay the leads and plug them in. Is that going to work? Yes it is. I might as well do the same with the other transistor at the moment because uh, 
I'm going to need to. What have I done with the other transistor? It's, it's just eluded me. Have I just, uh, have I just misplaced that other transistor? Am, am I? I think I just have misplaced that other transistor. That's clever. Um. That's okay. I have a lot of I have a lot of transistors. So let's uh, get the other transistor and put it um, one further away. So let's uh, just splay these leads a bit. In goes the emitter, then the collector. I shall put that. Will I put? No, I'll keep it here. Ah, I could kind of preform the leads a bit better, but I'm just going to mush them in like that. It kind of works. Where did that transistor go? That was so odd that I just managed to lose a transistor so quickly. That's impressive. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the 1 mega ohm resistor to the base here. So the 1 mega ohm is brown, black, green, 1, 0 and 5 zeros. So I'm going to add it down to the base here from the positive rail. So that's plugged into the positive rail down to the base of the first transistor. And the other thing that's going in the base of the first transistor is this 100 nanofarad capacitor. So it's going there and jumping over onto this lead. So I'll have to put in a wee jumper lead to actually... Let's use a little white lead to jump from here to there, which is... A, this is the midpoint between the this resistor and the, um, the uh, microphone here. So that's... A, I've just put that wee jump in there. Now comes the next resistor that's needed is the 18K, which is brown, grey, orange, one eight and three zeros. And that's going to the base of this transistor, and it's just going up to there, to the positive rail. And that's the one that's going to turn this transistor on normally, but the, that transistor is then going to be pulled down and turned off by this one down here. So let's uh, pick another colour, let's pick another colour, let's choose yellow. So that's going to come from the base of this transistor down to the collector of this one, so that when the, this transistor turns off, it pulls that one, it turns on, it turns that one off. Now we need our 10 ohm resistor for the LEDs, so I'm going from the collector of this transistor just up to here, and then Theoretically, that's more or less it, isn't it? And you just need to plug the LED in between there and there. Is that right? It just seems so simple. There's just so little to it. Um, OK, let's connect the battery and see if smoke comes out of it. Right, I saw... Oh, I can actually see it flashing already. If I go down and speak, uh, yes, it's responding quite well to that. It's actually working quite well, indeed. So uh, that's nice. That is a nice, simple little circuit. Uh, I shall... Uh, Mark that as negative and that as positive. Yeah, just as a wee thing. Um, right, so let's try the uh, let's try the string of coloured lights in. So plug that in there, and that in there, and is it going to make them light? Yes, it is. Okay. Now I need some music, so uh, the next bit, the, in fact the rest of the video, I'll just play it out then with some music uh, to see how it responds, if it as responds well as the little uh, bangle thing did. Um, and uh, we'll see how this looks in the dark, so I'll just shuffle these about a bit to get them into position, and then play the video out with uh, some of my own music, the... Uh, uh, what is it, so much YouTube, no time for sleep uh, music, just to actually try these out. <laughs> 